In October 1988, the Soviet Union sent two spacecraft to investigate Mars, named Phobos 1 and 2, after one of Mars' two moonlets. Although launched by the Soviets, the mission actually represented an international effort of an unprecedented scale, with more than 13 European countries participating officially, and British and American scientists participating personally, though with their government's knowledge and blessings. Phobos 1 was somehow lost on its way in September 1988. But Phobos 2 did make it to Mars and operated perfectly, sending back to Earth images from the surface of Mars. On March 1, 1989, these pictures of a highly strange grid were received. The grid, here in the upper right, was shot both in the optical and in the infrared range. Later, they were merged into this composite. And here is what this amazing grid looks like once the optical image is enlarged. Then, for the next 24 days, no other pictures were released. On March 26, Phobos 2 sent back images, taken just south of the Martian equator, of this uncanny elliptical shape. aligned with this long linear strip, stretching for 300 kilometers. March 27, the Soviets announced sudden problems in keeping radio contacts with Phobos II. March 30, the Soviet evening TV news of Renia. Good evening. Tonight we start out with a scoop. A sensational item. News of a report by Western observers that an accident, a catastrophe, has happened to the Soviet space probe Phobos, which is part of an international program in which some 40 countries participate. But now, the facts. This here represents a unique phenomenon. Before now, no one had ever taken such detailed infrared pictures of Mars. What part of the planet? This one here? Approximately, more or less in this area here, marked red. And then there is a very clearly outlined strip starting here and ending here. A strip about 20 to 25 kilometers wide, which is visible in both the optical and the infrared range. These are shots taken on one and the same day. This shadow actually appeared all of a sudden. Why am I calling it a shadow? Because you can see things through it. So this is an object not suspended about the surface, but actually located on the surface itself? Yes, of course. This elliptical shadow then, is it in Mars atmosphere or on the planet's surface? Or is it difficult to tell? One thing is for sure, this something is not positioned horizontally. Well, to me it looks like a rocket taking off from the surface of Mars and leaving a trail behind. What do you think about that? Well, if you'd want to fantasize, it could be interpreted that way too. Now we think we ought to look at the real circumstances that have caused that trail, even though they haven't yet been fully clarified. That's more likely to be the shadow of some object, since surface elements can be seen through it. How long will it take to process all of the information to get more or less objective scientific results rather than fantastic ones? Come back in a week. But one week later, no details. Three weeks later, at a press conference, a scientist at the Soviet Space Research Institute offers this curious, unsolicited statement. It does take a minimum of precision criteria to obtain on the image these spots, which uh, some would like to call flying saucers, that appear within the visual field of the infrared range. It must be pointed out that the flying saucer version is not ours. We'd have wanted it to all be that way. Actually, at first we were saying that there was no flying saucer, 
that surely all that we saw could be explained in understandable natural and physical terms. Five months later, in September 1989, British Channel 4 runs a new space.